Look at this cake pop. It looks like there's a giant web or something. Like it's captured in a web. A uh, fear hashtag totally not running out of ideas for intros. Uh, I hope you guys had a good uh, Father's Day. Uh, yeah, I took my father to see the movie Tag. Have you seen the movie Tag? Don't watch it. It's a complete waste of your time. First of all, it's uh, apparently restricted in the United States, which means they have to be 18 or older to see it. Here it's PG-14. How do they determine if it's PG-14 or PG-13? I have no idea, but like, yeah, like, I find it a bit disturbing. Uh, so if you get like a large size of popcorn, you can apparently get it refillable. So, uh... Uh, what my dad did was he waited till right before the movie ended, and that like right as the credits were playing, and then rushed off to refill his popcorn so that we could take it home. That was clever of him. What are you here for again? Go ahead. What's the title say? Ow. Um. All oh, right, Doctor, the Web of Fear. Hehe. <laughs> okay. Take three. This is the perfect reflection of what happened last time. Uh, in my last video, what I said, how about being a YouTuber is freaking tough. Okay, this is the third time that I'm filming this intro. Um, because the first time, I filmed for about 38 seconds, I believe. And then, um, then, uh, then, uh, then it showed a sign saying, cannot record. And then, when I tried to go into it, it said, um, I just a gray screen with a yellow question mark, and then when I tried to delete it, it said that it couldn't. And the one minute of space that it took up, like, was still taken up. And then, like, so that one minute of space was taken up by a video that was, wasn't even useful. Like, it, like, it wasn't gonna work. I tried it a few times, and then eventually, finally, it, it deleted. So, uh, so then I tried again. And the same thing happened. So I just turned my camera off and on again, and I could successfully delete it. And then it seems to be working. So, um, well, okay. It's one of those times where you're just thinking, like, you know, like, I gotta get a video done, but this thing's stopping me. Jesus Christ. That, that, that's why I really don't want to go into a more advanced video editing software, because I keep wondering, like, but what if, what if this happens? Like, yeah, I know that I'll learn, but like, I'm not sure if I'm ready to handle that yet. But anyway, so, um, reenactment of what you missed. Um, oh my goodness, I forgot that I left my Superman disc in here, because I'm, uh, getting ready for my review of Superman. Uh, oh, why isn't the DVD player opening? That's odd. Oh, look, it opened. Yay, yeah, I'm, review I'm uh, watching Superman movies for my Superman reviews. Actually, uh, that's not really... Um, you see, it's actually because, um, because, uh, I actually already did the, the reviews for those movies, it's just they're, um, they're, they're listed, like, they're, like, 50 minutes long, so I'm trying to figure out how to edit them down to a shorter length, like that Doctor Who video that was an hour long, and I had to edit that down. I'm actually just watching them because, uh, I used to like watching a show called Victorious and then Sam and Cat, I'm not sure if you, don't judge me for watching that, we're all allowed to have our likings. And, uh, I would do push-ups while watching, it helped, like, keep me pumped. And then, uh, that was over, and it's about to be taken off Netflix, so I was decided to try Superman movies next, and it seems to be alright. Um, so, uh, yeah, but you don't, uh, that doesn't really matter. Uh, oh my goodness, I already filmed, this, this video is already, like, this amount of time long. Uh, it's time to review Doctor Who, The Web of Fear. I'm sure that my mood will, uh, come back into place as we get further into the video. Uh, the text is still, uh, uh, because this, like the enemy of the world, was, uh, found. What were the chances of all of the enemy of the world and most of the web of fear being found? Those particular stories that were consecutive next to each other? I don't know. Many people think that they're hiding Marco Polo in there. I don't know why they may be hiding it. But, um, yeah, so originally only episode one of this six-parter existed, now only episode three is missing. Many people think that's not missing, they're just hiding it, despite the fact that I have no idea why they do that. So story number 41. Here we go. Thing. Check the disc. Yeah. Discs have sometimes been like that. Okay. 
Here we go. Look, another trailer for Doctor Who. New Doctor Who. This is Series 7 Part 1 again. Isn't that something? Alright, here we go. And, uh, as, like last time, I'm gonna show um, as little visuals as possible. Because, uh, you know. Oh, uh, well, what is the uh, what is the available now mean? Oh, I, I guess that's just for uh, the enemy of the world, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. All right, uh, yeah, because I, I thought for a minute that the enemy of the world showed a commercial for the underwater mask, but no, it was the web of fear. This one. Okay, episode one. Here we go. I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying to move past from what just happened, but anyone who's ever used a computer knows the sheer fear that happens when it says that there's an error. Okay. Because computers, like, isn't something that's easy to understand. It's not like a pot where you break it and then just put it back together. I mean, pots aren't really that simple either, but... Okay, okay, just play the, play the thing, play the thing. Diddle-ling, 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 diddle-ling. So this story begins right where the enemy of the world took off, where Salamander got flung into space when he dematerialized the TARDIS without closing the doors. Not opening the door in mid flight like a loose cannon reconstruction saw. So listen. See? And this episode was recovered, so it wasn't like there was crappy audio originally. Right, when they find an episode, how does that work? Like the, the Celestial Atomic Part 4, the end title is still missing. They, the, the, where it says, like, next episode, a holiday for the Doctor, they, they did, like, a reconstruction of that in Lost in Time, but, like, how does that work? Okay, I don't know. But anyway, um, it doesn't actually show any footage from before, but it does just show them, like, slipping. I've watched that intro so many times, because, like, I, I remember, like, watching it over and over again when I watched it on iTunes, just the first few minutes, so it's, like, I don't remember it as much before, but when I was watching it, it was, like, all the memories were coming back. It was, like, when you're re-watching something that you've watched, like, a couple of years ago, and and then the memories just come back to you, but this I've watched so many times, so it's, like, I think that I could just reenact the entire scene again. Whoa! Oh, that, that's the Bumble Snowman from, that's the Bumble Snowman from, like, what, like, three stories ago? So this old man uh, is grieved by her daughter, or I think, yeah, because she called him father, and he was supposed to meet her at the airport, and they play this uh, eerie music from 1960s stuff, and uh, he's like, yeah, the Abominable Snowman's gonna kill us all, and then the silver ball appears from the Abominable Snowman. Meanwhile, the TARDIS gets suspended in space and gets wrapped up in a web and slowly dragged down to wherever they are. They are. They are. <laughs> they are. Well, that's a new look for the Yeti. The guy who owns the museum has a weird candle thing, but it's like on a wheel, so like he turns it out and he like blows out, turns it, blows, that's pretty cool. But anyway, so Jamie points out that the light is on, that normally says when the TARDIS has materialized, and that's when they're suspended in space, and then the doctor goes, like, he doesn't believe Jamie for some reason, and he's just like, well, we haven't landed, have we? And he's like, no, I'm not arguing with that. I'm just saying the light came on. And he's like, no, that's a, that, that, that. And he's like, I'm just saying that the light came on. And then Victoria came in. Why is that light flashing? And I was like, are you two playing some sort of... Oh, but we have that. Like, I don't like it. Why can't you just trust each other? Hasn't Jamie kind of proven that he's trustworthy at this point? But anyway, so, uh, yeah. So the TARDIS has somehow materialized in space, I guess, or some sort of gravity has grabbed it. Somehow the light on top of the TARDIS is still blinking. I always used to wonder, because, like, the TARDIS isn't designed to always be a police telephone box. I remember I once told someone about the TARDIS is a police box, and he, of course, didn't know that that meant phone box. If I said phone box, it would make sense, and he said that he thought that that meant, like, a whole bunch of police coming out of the box. But, like, if it was, like, a mountain, then, like, you know, because, like, phone booths, they don't tend to have a light bulb on top that flashes. Like, I, I don't, like, like... It seems that just like if it materialized as anything else, it would just disappear and reappear. But why is this one have the blinking light? I don't know. But so they wrapped up in a web and dragged down. I wonder why many people thought that this was crossing over with the web planet. <laughs> I like this guy. So the doctor uh, makes some sort of sciencey thing. Jamie kind of helps him. Victoria kind of just sits there beside him and watches. And then he's just like, "Well, it'll do nothing at the moment, but it'll uh, do something when we start moving." And she was like, "Well, we're not moving." They just drops it. Luckily, the doctor catches it. But like, dude, like you shouldn't just drop the scientific thing like that. But anyway, the doctor manages to move them not far, but about half a mile from where they were supposed to land. But, so where were they supposed to land? Like, what does that mean? Like, if they were gonna land, like, they landed here, so is this where they're supposed to land? And, like, are they, like, half a mile from, like, like, 
I don't know. But anyway, so they land, and the doctor points out, like, it's funny how we always land on your Earth. It's like, they must have been watching 60s Batman, because 60s Batman constantly makes fun of jokes like that. They're just saying, like, oh, we're looking for someone with very weird costumes, and Batman and Robin are just like, no, we're just ordinary crime fighters. But, so anyway, it's like making fun of the own show. But, um, uh, so anyway, so the doctor teaches Jamie and Victoria how a train works, and then they find a dead body. Ooh. Was it the Yeti or the Zarbi that got him? Kind of makes the quality look like this was an episode that was just recovered. You remember in the Enemy of the World when I said the ones that were just recovered and the one that was recovered for a while? Uh, recovered for a while that existed for a while, but kind of different in quality. So the Doctor hides under like a platform, like here's the subway platform, here's the train tracks. The Doctor's hiding under the platform and then the Yeti starts spraying him with wet. I was gonna say, I thought this scene was in episode one, and I saw the web thing, and I knew that was a cliffhanger, so I was like, is this the cliffhanger? But we had a team. Yeah, so, uh, a guy comes in, and surprise, surprise, he's actually Professor Travis, a guy who was in The Abominable Snowman, and a guy that was pretty unimportant to the story, in my opinion. I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't think I even mentioned his name during my entire Abominable Snowman review. But he's back with the Yeti, and... So the cliffhanger of the Doctor touches that great big pile of web and then gets blown back. Okay, never mind. I spoke too soon. They don't meet Professor Travis in this episode. I thought it was episode one. It's odd, though. The credits are not just rolling like normal in the blank void. And then all of a sudden, the background changes to this weird web bubbly thing. So they meet Professor Travis, and the doctor's fine, by the way. It's kind of funny, because I don't think I've ever seen this story, but with, like, real footage on one side, and then uh, telesnaps on the other side, so I guess that's why I'm associated these with movement, that's why I thought the, the clips were from episode one, because I thought like, I only remember them moving, but I guess I just never really watched the telesnap version that often. But <laughs> they're like playing a recording, and it's like, someone's screaming like, ah, ah, and it's like, great stuff. <laughs> Jesus freaking whoa! See them charge at that kid who no one likes at school. I mean, it's not like, you know, like, no one likes at school and he's like, he's just a jerk. He's just a jerk. Like, freaking David. And I'm allowed to say his name because he said it was alright. Like, and besides, even if he didn't, well, he said that he would be in all my subscriber videos and then he sends me a stupid, like, oh, I've moved on from you guys. And by that, I probably means, like, I don't want to do any more things that, yeah, that, that. He broke a promise, so I'm allowed to say his name. Besides, there were like tons of people called David. It's fine. I, 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 okay, this is odd to bring up, but like when the doctor was talking to the Jamie and Victoria about how a train worked, as a kid, you'd probably like to see the doctor like yelling at them because at the like as a kid, you're thinking that's obvious to you and it should be obvious to them. But like, I don't know. I mean, like not all children are like that. You can't judge people by how old they are, what race they are, what gender they are. If you're not if you're not a kid who's like that, then that's amazing. Please leave in the comment down below because that's pretty cool. But uh, like, when I'm my age, I don't really like to see them being like shouted at. Like they just didn't know. Sometimes you have to yell at them to get through to them though. But anyway, so Jamie and one guard are going through the tunnels, and then a fungus appears, and that's the thing for part two. And of course, we don't have the grids without this weird web thing for some reason. Dead lilling, dead lilling, dead lilling, dead lilling, dead lilling. The one like before, when episode 1 was the only surviving episode, this time episode 3 is the only missing episode. So they just took a picture of a yeti and put a pyramid in it. I would reenact this scene all the time before and I'd be like, We've got to get to the archway! The pyramid! Shoot the pyramid! What do you think? The accent was good at least, wasn't it? You tell us that right there is blurred out. Doctor Who, did he even appear at all last episode? Maybe he was on vacation. But uh, he's recovered by uh, General, and then uh, they're saying Gooch Street, and the subtitles say G-O-O-D... G-E, I think. But like, I thought for a moment that I said like, Google, and I was like, whoa. I remember once though, when I was on a playground, like I was like, this was like grade, like, low grade. And I was like, asking the teacher what he thought of Google. 
and I was talking about the number Google, you know, one followed by a hundred zeros, and I was holding a stick. And then my, te and my teacher, I guess, never heard of that number. I was just pretending not to because he wanted me to explain it. I was saying, like, are you talking about Google the website or is Google the name of the stick that you're holding? Oh, look at the way the, the action figure. Well, what the caption? So far, we just had telesnaps and zoom ins and zoom outs. We haven't had a caption. The Eddie approaches the fortress explosive store where and it's got zoom ins and zoom outs feel smooth. Like it's not just like a sun star and a sun halt. See, it kind of just slowly goes off like that. Victoria accidentally, well, not accidentally, but tells someone about the TARDIS and the daughter's like, You didn't tell them about the TARDIS, did you? And she's like, Oh no, do you think that? And the daughter's like, Yes, I do think. Unlike you, you never think. Hehe. <laughs> Also, a guy screams, and it just shows a telesnap of Professor right. Travis and whoever the woman he's with. Just like, what was that? Wait here. Probably. I'm assuming that they had much more shocked faces. That was probably the only one that they could find for telesnaps. But anyway, so Professor Travis is attacked by a Yeti, and that's the plan for part three. Nice face there. Also, why does the font of the text look slightly different? Eb. Shut up, I'm allowed to have a fried pickle and a burger and fries I had from last night, don't judge me! What's odd though is that while the beginning of the reconstructed episode 3 showed footage from the end of episode 2, the end of the reconstructed reconstruct did episode 3 did not show footage of the beginning of episode 4, because again, it kind of takes place directly where it leaves off without actually using actual footage. In the subtitles, Professor Travis is saying, And Yeti, hide! Before, I wasn't using subtitles, and I would always think it was just going like, Yeti, it's like just making gibberish noise because of how terrified he was. Kind of like when Jamie says Brigadon, which I'm sure means something, but yeah. Shut up, I'm allowed to have leftover cake from last night. Some people question the doctor, and the colonel's pretty quick to believe when the doctor tells him about a space time machine, and of course, uh, Professor Travis backs him up because he, he believes him because they haven't aged at all in the past 40 years from he has like a huge beard and glasses and all. I guess glasses. Okay, anyway, uh, is that, uh, so anyway, uh, so the other woman was called Mrs. Travis, so I'm just gonna call her that from here on out. And they actually go outside for the first time since episode one. I don't sure if it's actually filmed outside, but like, it's a setting I remember in episode one when Jamie's like, Hey, it's broad daylight out here, doctor, it ain't no night in here. And in here. <laughs> um, but anyway, so, uh, and then they just fight off some Yeti. So the Yeti start wandering the streets like the war machines and the war machines. That's the Cybermen's theme song. Yeti, what are you doing stealing the Cybermen's theme song? Also, where are the Zarbi? Stuff has to do with webs. Why aren't the Zarbi in it? Did you think you were safe? Okay, so the cliffhanger for part four is the Yeti appear and then Professor Travis is behind him. And... I think he ends up like being like possessed by the Yeti or whatever, but uh, well, like in the clip he looks terrified. Whoa, that web came in a little bit early that time. Whoa, is this a telesnap? For a moment the Yeti looked incredibly still after that dramatic fade out and dramatic fade in the black. But Professor Travis is possessed and he's kidnapped Victoria and then the doctor's hacking into the silver ball thing and he's just like, yes, I've done all this stuff and he's like, is that all? And the doctor's like, all? I'd like to see you do that. Because like, I always don't get it when people are just like, uh, like, like, like okay, like, I, I am one to say, like, this is just my second phone, and I don't have any plans to get a new one anytime soon. Because, like, unless this one breaks, of course. But, like, like people are so excited to get a brand new phone that has a slightly bigger screen. Sometimes just a screen that extends to the sides, which means they have a better chance of breaking it. Or have some sort of stupid feature, like, scrolling upward or downward just by tilting your phone, saving you from moving your thumb. I guess you don't want to get your screen dirty, but, like... It makes no sense how people like go and like want to be first in line to see this new phone that has basically nothing new about it. But where was I going with this? Oh yeah, right. So people do complain saying like, oh, I can't believe they haven't added this new feature or figured out how to make this. Like, and to which I always say like, could you even make this kind of phone? Or, 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 or whatever, who invented the telephone? Who invented the telephone? Alexander Graham Bell. The telephone that Alexander Graham Bell made, do you think that you can make that from scratch? No? But then stop complaining! 
Yeah, it was a little delayed, but it was acceptable. That's what my French teacher said on my French speech for my oral exam. It was acceptable. So the Dr. And Mrs. Travis said the other soldier who was there with Colonel and stuff like that, not believing the doctor before, uh, create the silver ball and use it like a remote. There, it was like, move forward, stop, move to the back, move in slow motion, move backwards, turn back time, and just kidding. Only hear about what the ball was doing. And their plan is to stuff it into the Yeti's chest so that the Yeti will do it. So could you stuff it into your own chest? I guess the Yeti is a robot. But once you stuff it into the Yeti's chest, you all of a sudden have a way more things that you can do. And that's exactly what happens. They stuff it into the Yeti's chest and they're just like, move your right arm, roar, shut up, and stuff like that. But like, the ball couldn't do it by itself. Like, what if you like plug that thing into a time machine? Like, that's like a universal remote almost. Oh, whoa, okay, so the cliffhanger for part 5 is when the fungus, or I'm just gonna call it the evil foam of doom, just busts through the kitchen, or whatever room it is, and the furnace- Holy crap, how'd they film this? <laughs> okay, hang on a moment. Look at this, the table just kind of falls off the set. But of course, it ain't no credits without the web. Oh, good point. <laughs> he booked it. Well, that was good acting. But for the it says switch off for 90 seconds, but the Yeti is an alien, isn't it? Or maybe just a robot, I don't know. But like, what 90 seconds for it? Or maybe it's just the voice of whatever goes in their definition of a second? Like, does it like analyze their voice waves and analyze the button that where it came from and what certain words mean? Like, what if I said like, shoo but I trained like the last five years that Shouflon meant cake. So I said Shouflon into the microphone. Will the microphone be able to analyze my sound waves and know that I mean cake? I don't know, but I was like, switch off. Does that mean like, like, is that like us like cutting off our oxygen? So, so the guys are kind of by the Yeti and the doctor does what he always does when he's depressed. <laughs> he is all just like, Yeti, come towards me. And then Yeti comes towards me. Where's your right arm? He doesn't do so. And now uh, what's the use? Since Ram is another yeah, and he's like Whoa. So the doctor's gonna have mind absorbed by the green intelligence and the person who was just like, I'll get you for this is spoiler warning. Actually working for the green for some reason. Like, Your mind is about to be absorbed by the great intelligence and Jamie's like, Attack the Yeti and then the Yeti starts fighting the others. I don't get like same with Superman too, how like the one good guy happens to fight off all the other guys. And yeah, they're equally matched, but the chances of the Yeti beating just one of the Yeti is 50-50. They are robots, so it is kind of literally 50-50, because normally you'd have to take in like the strengths and the motives and the, uh, whatever the people. But like, the Yeti's fighting off multiple different Yeti, and also another guy who somehow manages to turn his skin brown, but then, then, <laughs> And the doctor's like, no, leave me be, you don't understand, I gotta stay here. Maybe he thinks that that's because of his mind is being absorbed by the green intelligence, despite the fact they haven't even started the process yet. Or though maybe he was just talking as he was saying that, or maybe he was just trying to trick them and make it sound like he wasn't absorbing it, so that in the end he'd just be like, while well, you're done, sort of like one of the doctor gives you a shot, and they're just like, okay, this is just a warm-up, boop, boop, I'm done. But anyway, so, <laughs> and then, uh, there is pretty good quality acting, but as it turns out, the doctor earlier crossed the wires and then, so that the green intelligence would have been absorbed into him. So all they've done is cut off the green intelligence from Earth, and they still float around somewhere. So the Doctor, Jamie, and Victoria run off to the TARDIS and just before they're about to be hit by a train that's been turned on. So, would I recommend it? Yeah, 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 it's pr pretty cool. Episode 3, I'm kind of glad that one's missing because in my opinion it didn't feel like that much happened in it. But anyway, so, thank you all so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like so I know that you enjoyed it. If you didn't like it, please do dislike so I know that you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below if you'd like to try to watch because it feels awesome to get some motivation and encouragement. If you didn't like, please do comment down below saying why you didn't like so I can for next time. Otherwise, won't be able to improve. I'm just going to treat you just like as if we're like. And subscribe so that you know when my next video comes out. Thanks again so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you next time. We'll review story number 42. The Wet. There's no more Ice Warriors, and the Yeti doesn't even make that noise. Uh, I almost. Fury from the Deep. Bye bye.